welcome back to genuine corner guys this is the first video in the android studio project development series and today we will start uh, making our inspiring course application from scratch so this is the first module that we are going to make we will build an application and in that application we will provide an option for swiping in between inspiring codes so this is what we are going to make I have in program this like or share button that is just dummy buttons we will program that when we reach there so that what we are going to develop and for that in order to store the inspiring codes and the order I have created a file and this is how we are going to store the inspiring codes so it is just a simple text file and it is stored in such a way that I have used this symbol for separating the code and the order so when I go for uh, using the split function I can split the string into two one for order and one for the inspiring codes so that's how we are storing the data so I think we are ready for starting a new project so I'm going to start a new Android studio project and in that I have to give a name for my application so I'm going to give genuine inspiration maybe so that will be the name of our application and this is the company domain if we are going to publish your application then uh, none of the other apps in the play store should have this company domain uh, i mean it has to be unique so in my case i am going to use com.genuine.coder. Uh, maybe inspiration so that's fine then i am going to press on the next so that's good and this is the minimum sdk so if you give honeycomb then the app will only work on uh, devices that is running android 3.0 better so the uh, good idea is switching into jelly bean i mean if you use jelly bean 95 per two percentage of the devices now contains a uh, version better than jelly bean so uh, moreover if you are switching to Android 3.0 or 2.33 there will be a lot of missing features so I am going to switch on to the Android 4.1 then next then you can add activities uh, from the starting so if you choose no activity then it will be an empty project here I am going to use an empty activity finish then I'm going to name the one main activity that's fine so let's press finish it will take a little time to load the uh, project window so let's wait for that and here we are so this is the generated project so we got an activity which will be an empty activity the gradle build is running so that's why the error and let me introduce you to the android project structure I hope you already know the basics if you haven't just listen to this uh, in the Android project we are using this manifest I mean inside the manifest there is a file Android manifest.fxml that is used to define the kind of structure of your application if your for uh, application want to access internet then it has to be defined here I mean we have to define that this application will use the internet using users permission which we I will uh, show you later and in this part it is defining that this application uh, having the icon the map, map IC launcher and having the label genuine inspiration so when I install the application I will get this label genuine coder there and I'm using some kind of theme app theme that is not relevant here then we have an activity each and every activity that your application contains should be defined in the manifest section so we have only one activity which is the main activity and this code means that it is the starting activity which means if you have a number of activities and the system has to know which one is the starting one so if you cut and paste it that on some other activity then that will be your launching activity so that's about the android manifest and these things are used for controlling the build structure etc so in order to give you a rough idea i'm going to double click on this build or gradle then you can see that the minimum sdk version is set to 16 that's why we have set previously using the user interface uh, when we created the project so i'm going uh, if you want to change it to the minimum sdk version you can change that right here so that's fine then here i'm coming back to the main activity 
the first thing that we have to do is to copy this data.txt file into the asset folder in your Android application. So uh, the Android project uses the asset folder for storing this kind of information files. Maybe it may be the database or uh, files or mp3 files then in that case it is used in the assets folder so if you look into the structure of the project you cannot see an asset folder it is because you haven't created one so you can create an asset folder by right clicking in the app then new here there is a folder section and inside that there is an option for assets folder so I'm going to choose that then okay that's fine I'm going to press finish now you can see that there is an asset folder. Now I'm going to use the file save us and now what you have to do is you have to copy and paste uh, this into that section for that there is an easy way I'm going to press on the assets folder then I'm going to use the show in files. So now there is an assets folder then I'm going to create a new file let this be data.txt then I'm going to open it paste it then save it that's fine so now we have the data.txt right there if you just come back to the project and click on the asset section you can see that there is a data.txt so now we want to read data from this data.txt file for that you can use asset manager class for accessing the assets in your application so uh, asset <coughs> manager mgr or maybe manager this is a very intelligent uh, id i mean the uh, android studio so it will even suggest you the names for your variables so asset manager manager is equal to get asset manager it's a function <coughs> or maybe guess get assets so that's fine now we have to open the file that will return an input stream so i'm going for input stream in equals manager dot then we can go for open then we have to give the file name so the name of our file is data dot txt so I'm going to give that data dot txt and now it will throw exception just like we do in Java we have to go for a try catch now that's fine now in order to read data from the input stream I'm using normal scanner class in Java dot utils class so scanner is C and equals new scanner so that's fine now I'm going input stream then we have to read line by line so while is cn dot has next we have to read data so I'm going to read that into a term string term b equals uh, scn dot next line so it will fetch the first line then what we have to do is is what if we have to split the data so this is a file and we have to split the string into two so the first part uh, contains the code and second part contains the order so for that I am going to use string code equals term dot split then I am splitting with the this symbol and I'm going to select the first one so we got it string code I'm going to copy and paste that here I want the order of the code so string order equals term dot split and here I'm going to use the one it is a regular expression that way I have used the opening and closing square brackets and this is the one that we are using for splitting now we got the code and order now we have to check whether our coding was correct for that you can use system.out.println in your application or you can use log.d it, it, it is not uh, it, uh, the standard is using log.d for printing the output so log dot print the ln should work but in my case I'm going to use the log dot D and D means debug e dot error if you want to report an error you can use log dot e and if for debugging you can use log dot D and here first you have to give a tag here I'm going to give the name of the activity so that will be main activity and then I'm going to give the quote plus then I am going to give some kind of separation by then I'm going to give the other name so that's fine now let us run the code for running the application you have to have an emulator running or a phone connected then I'm going to press on this play button play like button then nexus for API 
the output will be shown in the Android monitor section so I'm going to press on this Android monitor then the building proceed and it might take a little time so be patient and you can set it is launching an activity in our phone so Android emulator now we got our activity open it will take a little time too so we are getting hello world this is the default generated label that we are seeing and I am coming back to this section and I have written the code to read the codes let's see what is that so as you can see we are getting the inspiring codes so the main this main activity means that we have given the tag and the bus preparation for tomorrow by Jackson Brown so that's working and if you want to get or filter out the log cat then you can use this section and main activity so that only the contents that have in the ta uh, tag main activity be, will be shown here so that's it guys i think this is the end of the first video in this video we have loaded the data and from, from the next video we will start developing the user interface and things like that for so as always thank you for watching this video like the video if you like it and subscribe for more cool videos